Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. In my quest to find the best inexpensive lithium iron phosphate battery, I'm going to review the Redodo 200 amp hour cold weather protection battery today. I developed this thing. It's called the bank manager. It's what lets you put lithium iron phosphate mixed in with your lead acid system. It um, lets you charge all the chemistries properly and really it's the only way to charge lithium iron phosphate properly. I uh, put it out, lots of people wanted it, lots of people bought it, and then lots of people said, hey Clark, what battery should I buy? Well, I didn't know. So I started doing this series. Uh, there's some very expensive batteries out there. I was stupid enough to have bought some to start with. They're unnecessary. I think there's perfectly good inexpensive batteries out there. And today in this search, I'm going to tear apart and uh, really look into this new Redodo. Now, I did a review of the 200 amp Redodo battery before, but this is a different battery. Uh, it has a BMS in it with completely different personality and it has the ability to shut down the battery's ability to take a charge if the weather gets too cold. Now, a thing about lithium iron phosphate battery is if you charge them when it's below freezing, you can destroy them instantly. Lead, you know, they've got all those things about it where if you do the wrong thing, it's not good for them. You know, they'll only last a couple of years. Lithium has a list of things and if you do the wrong thing, it's over right then. That's one of them. Now, if you're living on a sailboat and the way that we'd like to think about it, living your life correctly, you don't need this feature because, you know, it doesn't freeze down here. But if you're living in a place where it sometimes freezes, you know, where your boat is, or more importantly, you don't have a boat. We have a truck camper that we use quite often and the batteries that are in the truck camper don't have this feature. That's a problem. If I park that camper somewhere that's freezing and I forget to turn off the solar panels, if I come back a little later, very likely my batteries are destroyed. So it's really the best thing possible to put um, this feature into a battery that's going to get exposed to cold at all. Now, this happens to be the Generation 3 Bank Manager. I'm developing it now. It's not available yet. Uh, if you're familiar with Bank Managers, you see it has a lot of extra little wires that hook up. One of the features of this is this guy can have a temperature sensor, so he'll know to shut down the lithium batteries if things get cold. But that's not as good as having the feature built right into the BMS, in my opinion. So this is a valid uh, choice. There's some other ones. If you go down below the video in the description uh, and read through that, you're going to find something called the leaderboard. I highly recommend anybody buying batteries go to the leaderboard. You're going to see a graph that Emily put together with all the batteries are reviewed. Of course, links to the review. Please watch the review. The best price we could find for you, sometimes that's a very good price with a special coupon. And a description of whether it has this feature, that feature, the other feature. There's a few of these batteries that have this feature. Uh, only one other that is a discount battery, a very inexpensive battery that I found so far. And that one's only a 100 amp. So if you want... A 200 amp hour battery that has this feature, this may be the cheapest way you can go. But let's find out for sure. I'm going to pop the top off this. I'm going to go through this battery. I'm going to look at it all electrically. Uh, we're going to see what's inside. We're going to do all the normal things we do on this channel. We're going to do thermal testing. And by the end of it, we're going to have an idea whether this is the battery you want to buy or not. So, got inside, um, looked around. I'm going to do this video a little differently. These videos have been going on for like 30 minutes. Hopefully this one will be a lot shorter because I've done a lot of the tests off camera. I'm just going to report the test results for a lot of these things. Trust me, I'm doing all the diligence. I'm doing all the work. If you want to know how it's done, look at any other video. I've probably done like 10 of these where I take you through every step. Um, you got to be bored of it by now. So if this is your first video, go watch some other videos. You'll know where the numbers come from. Uh, we're going to press on. Okay, this is the BMS. This is the device that controls how the uh, batteries um, 
see the outside world, how they're presented to the world. It is not a charge control device. That's for something like the bank manager or whatever else you're using to protect the batteries. This watches the voltage of every cell and it makes some decisions. If you take cell voltages out of a narrow envelope with lithium, they just die instantly. So if you discharge the battery too much before it's truly discharged, this will disconnect it and make it look discharged. If you overcharge it to the point where it's going to actually hurt the cells, they're actually already damaging the cells long term before this happens, but before it's about to vent the cells, it will shut down the battery and not accept any more charge. Another way you can hurt lithium, as I mentioned before, is if it's frozen and you attempt to charge it, you can kill it pretty darn fast. And this BMS has a thermal probe. Uh, there's two of them actually. One goes in here to make sure the BMS doesn't get too hot. And this one watches the batteries themselves, you know, shoved down into the case. And it watches the cell temperature. The cells could get too hot from overuse or on an internal problem. Again, shut down. But what's really clever about this one is the claim low temperature. This when it sees that the cells are near freezing, it will tell the BMS, do not accept a charge anymore. Um, there's only a few batteries in this price range that have this feature. Uh, and this is the first one in a larger case where you're getting a lot of um, amp hours in one deal. So you don't hook you know, too many batteries together. So I'm very interested in that. So that's the BMS and all the tricks about it. Oh, one more thing. This is a 100 amp BMS. Uh, they're very open about that. This is a 100 amp BMS, though it's a 200 amp hour battery. That means, though it carries 200 amp hours of capacity, like the fuel tank, it can only put out a maximum of 100 amps at a time, kind of like the carburetor. Technically, the cells would be good at putting out 200 amps, but this is a 100 amp BMS, so treat this the way it should be treated. It's uh, a fine decision, especially on most boats, if you wanted two of these, which would be common, 400 amp hours is a good number. That would give you 200 amps of discharge, which is a lot of power. I'm not gonna pull the cells out because these are the same cells that were in the other Rododo 200 plus I did. Um, they're fine cells and nobody seems to have a problem with them in particular. The next thing I did, and this is important, is uh, of course I charged it up with the bank manager to 100%. Then I hooked it to my bench power supply and I brought the power up and up and up. Uh, I kept charging it slowly until the BMS shut off. It does that when one of the cells um, hits a terminal voltage. The voltage should be 3.65 volts per cell, and it was. Then I very quickly went down all the cells and checked their voltages. This is something that, that is very telling about, I think, the quality of the battery and the quality of the manufacturer. Now, maybe I just got lucky, but this battery, all the cells are within hundreds of volts of each other. I'm seeing a lot of them that are within tenths, and it's like, oh, that's okay. But these were like spot on. Um, we did a little graph, and you get all that information. So um, good on you, Rodoto. Uh, either I just got lucky with this battery or they're doing some more balancing or sorting beforehand and getting a, a set that likes to live with each other. All right, let's move on. I'm gonna go get my inverter. I'm gonna put my inverter down here. We're gonna get some uh, big loads and we're gonna pull 100 amps out of this and see how it does and uh, see if anything gets hot. All right, got it all set up now. We've got the inverter on the table. We've got it plugged into the battery through the, some nice big double aught wires. We've got a heat gun here. This will use uh, the power that we need, turning it into heat in the room. And I've got uh, an amp meter here that's saying standby type numbers. We're gonna turn this on and bring this up until this guy's putting out his rated 100 amps. Then we're gonna pull out my thermal camera and see if anything gets warm. Won't right away, but we'll have a baseline. And then I'll let it run for quite a while until it feels right, probably 15 minutes. And uh, we'll do another thermal sense and call whether this is up to what it needs to be. Here goes. Okay, whoops, too much. All 
Okay, that's just a tad over 100. Um, old device that's been spending its life in a corroded environment, so it's a little touchy. But there we go, we've got 100 to 105 amps. And we'll give this a go. Remember with uh, these uh, FLIR cameras, well, at least the way I have it set up, it's going to make the hottest thing look white and look hot, but it's important to look at the temperature. And the hottest thing is only 38 degrees. The room is 28 degrees. So I can't feel a bit of heat here. It's uh, just warming up. We'll come back in uh, 10, 15 minutes and I'll report on how it works. Okay, it's been 15 whole minutes. Oh, um, let's check the voltage of the battery. It's been putting out over 100 amps this whole time. It's actually up to like 120 right now. Let me bring it down a little bit. And uh, let's see what the battery says for voltage. I get 12.58 uh, volts. Not great, but not, not bad either. Um, this would do this all day. Nothing is really hot. Oh, well, 60 degrees, I'm going to guess. Let's take a look. Okay, the hottest spot, it's yeah, 68 degrees inside the actual um, transistors. The wires are kind of the important thing. What are they at? One is quite cool. The other one is like 65 degrees. Um, I probably didn't tighten up the lugs tight enough uh, because these should be exactly the same. The same current is going around and this one's quite cool. So I'm gonna say that one's on me. I had all of this apart and put it back together. Uh, but these wires are just fine. They're, they're up to 100 amps all day. Yeah, I'll give this a pass. Let me turn this noisy thing off. Yeah, I'd buy that battery. All right, for the final test, we're going to try this cold weather shutdown. I'm in the Dominican Republic and I can't just make cold weather. So what we're going to do is charge the battery and then I'm going to put some salt on this ice and touch it to the probe. That should make the probe think it's a cold day and uh, we should be able to go. There we go. Okay, so we're charging at one and a half amps. Once I make this cold, that number should go to zero. Here goes. Got it in the ice water. Um, it's nice when you do this with one with a BMS because you look at your phone and you can see the temperature going down, but with this one, I've got to just uh, wait a while. Still charging. Oh, there it goes. Dropped right down to less than a half an amp. Um, and I understand some amount of charging is actually allowed, like really low amounts. <coughs> so it definitely signaled itself that it got cold. I'll take this out, warm it up with my hand, and we should see that number jump. Yep, jumped right back up. Okay, this BMS knows the temperature around it and it's uh, um, acting like it probably should. So I'll give that a pass as well. Now let's, um, I'm gonna put all this away and then we'll get back together and talk about what I liked, what I didn't like and how we place it on the leaderboard. So we're back, we're gonna go through the leaderboard but before that, one more important thing. Again, I'm gonna do this off, did this off camera so you guys don't have to sit through it. I got a new uh, calibrated discharge device. Uh, hopefully this holds up a little better. It still seems quite accurate. I discharged the full battery after I recharged it with the bank manager to the true 
Uh, and I got a hundred, I'm sorry, I got 202 amp hours out of it. Oh, uh, good number, right where it should be. So let's go down the leaderboard now. See how this stacks up. First thing is capacity. Well, 202 amp hours. Um, that's what it says. That's more than it says. That's what we're paying for. I give that a great. The cells could be luck of the draw, you know, but this particular instance, this battery is the best balanced battery I've ever seen come out of a factory at any price. So I'm going to give them an excellent because they got it right on this one. Can't say they all will, but they did. Build quality. They've got this new BMS. It does what it's supposed to do. It watches for cold situations and protects your battery. That's really important if you might be charging your batteries in the cold. And I'm talking to camper peoples. I'm talking to me. I'm going to have to solve that problem in my camper before we go back to the mountains. All the wires are adequate for the needs of the BMS. Uh, I would personally like to see them offer, you know, at a little more money, a plus version of this using their nomenclature, which would be all the same features and 200 amp hours, because I think that's a good number for this size battery. But 100 amp hours is a lot of power if you're going to put multiples of these in. As long as the total of all those is more than the amount of power you're going to use, you're good. Case, excellent. Redoto cases are excellent. They're becoming difficult to take apart. That's just me to you guys, Redoto. You don't need those extra clips, but um, it doesn't hurt you if you're not going to take them apart. This thing is sealed, and it's sealed in a really nice way. The only thing I would do to make it better would be like a screw down lid and a gasket, but then you're talking a whole nother, nother layer of cost and Redotos aren't expensive. So they're doing it right. Company, giving them an excellent, outright excellent. And not just because they're just a joy to work with and they are. I mean, I'm talking to lots of battery companies, but look, I'm me, right? I'm the guy that's gonna say good or bad things to all of you. So they're gonna butter me up. I also do the bank manager thing, and lots and lots of people buy batteries, you know, for the first time in their life, and they find problems, and when we find the problem comes down to the battery, and it does sometimes, and it's a Redodo battery, I follow through, and everyone has ended happy. A guy just had a problem with a 410, and he uh, wrote, uh, contacted Redoto, I guess he wrote them, and he included me, and I helped him with some of the tests because he didn't really know how to do them, and we did a full test suite of what an engineer would really know to know this is a bad battery, so we did a proof. And then he started walking through them, and of course, they're doing a script thing, as, you know, customer service is nowadays, and about, uh, since he initially gave that out, the woman he was working with passed the information right to the engineering department, and she got about halfway through the script. It was very obvious. Have you tried? Have you tried? And then right out of the blue, oh, the engineers say you get a new battery. Redoto is making good. Um, I wanted to report that because mistakes happen. I would rather not be their testing department, but when they make good in the end, I guess they're making good in the end. Cost value at the time of the uh, video, I give it a great. Um, it does what it's supposed to do. It does what it claims it should do. Can't ask for more than that in a battery, and it's reasonable priced. I think this is a good line. Be nice if they had Bluetooth too, but you keep adding would be nice twos and the price goes up every time. So I think they've hit a good market here. Cheapish battery, well built, stood behind, and has cold weather protection for the people who need it. If you live in the tropics, you don't need it. But if you do, you do. Thanks for watching the video. Again, leaderboard down below. If you've watched this far, you're serious about batteries. If you're gonna buy a battery, use that to compare. Look at my other reviews, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks a lot and bye from Tim.